I'm Nicole Crank. You know, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, we have this light shining in us, but we ourselves are like fragile jars of clay. Fragile jars of clay. You know, and I love the rest of that scripture because it says, well, that proves to us that the power that's in us is not of ourselves, but it's from God. And I think we get so trapped in feeling broken. And that's what I wanna ask you today. Do you feel broken? Like your past was broken, your, your future's broken because of what you did in your past, your life was broken, your heart was broken, your, your, your ideas were shattered. So many of us feel broken in so many different ways because the enemy is a creep and he thinks if he breaks us, then we'll quit. And then we look at ourselves in the mirror and we're like, I can't do this because I'm broken. There was this statue in the middle of town in Thailand and it had been there for hundreds of years and they were getting ready to do some construction. So they put some chains around it, hooked some bulldozers to pull it out of the way because it was massive and really heavy. Well, as they were pulling the statue, the statue cracked and everybody freaked out. They go start looking at the statue and they're looking in the cracks and it's really shimmering. And as they pull it off, they look underneath and they realize it's gold. The statue that has been in the middle of town for hundreds of years has so much more value than they ever knew. You see, what had happened hundreds of years ago is they dig through the records as they find out that enemies were coming to attack at the time, which was a village, and they didn't have time or a good place to hide this immense shiny gold statue. So they covered it with plaster and clay and then they painted it. They thought it was pretty the way it was, but they really found out the value once it cracked. I wanna tell you right now, you might be spending your life trying to cover your crack. Hello, buy a belt, pull up your pants, right? That's okay. But it's the cracks in our heart, the cracks in our personality that we think we're trying to hide. And I'm here to tell you that your brokenness and your cracks actually reveal the potential that you have to help heal others of pain. Your brokenness in your life is to help heal you and heal others. We can leave our pain where it is, keep it to ourselves and go nowhere. Or we can let God shine through and actually our helping others through our pain is how we get healed. You know, I, I was a cheerleader and I was doing all my bouncing and my leg really hurt. So I went to the doctor and found out I had a stress fracture in my leg. We were training for national champions and I'm five foot 11. I was the girl that all the other girls climbed on top of. And it wasn't very glamorous, but they needed me in that spot and I felt really bad for letting them down. Well, after weeks of waiting, I went back to the doctor with my mom and my mom said, is she okay to go? And he said, her leg is healed, she can go. My mom said, yeah, but will it break again in the same place? He said, there's something you don't understand. When a bone breaks, when it heals, it's never gonna break right there again because when it heals, it's actually stronger than before it was ever broken. That's what I wanna tell you today. You think you're a fragile vessel, but actually it's the power that's inside of you that won't shine out unless we can see the cracks and through the brokenness. Your brokenness allows God's light to shine. Don't try and cover it up. Baby, let that gold shine through. He actually wants you to pour out through those cracks, that brokenness in your life. And I wanna to close today in this last 60 seconds together with a poem, and that might be weird, but I think you're gonna love this. It says, the master was searching for a vessel to use. On a shelf there were many, which one would he choose? Take me, cried the gold one, I'm shiny and bright. I'm of great value and I do things just right. My beauty and luster will outshine the rest. And for someone like you, master, gold is certainly the best. Unheeding, the master passed on to the brass. It was wide-mouthed and shallow and polished like brass. Here, here, cried the vessel, I know I will do. Place me on your table for all men to view. The master came next to a vessel of wood. Polished and carved, it shallowly should. You may use me, dear master, the wooden bull said, but use me for fruit, don't use me for bread. The master looked down and saw a vessel of clay, empty and broken and helpless it lay. No hope for the vessel that the master might choose to cleanse and to hold, to fill and to use. Ah, this is the vessel I've been hoping to find. I will mend it and use it and make it all mine. I need not the vessel with pride of itself, nor the one who is narrow to sit on a shelf, nor the one who is big mouth and shallow and loud, nor the one who displays its contents so proud, nor the one who thinks he can do things just right, but this plain earthly vessel filled with my power and my might. Then he gently lifted the vessel of clay and he polished it off and used it that day and spoke to it kindly. There's work you must do. You just pour out to others the way I've poured into you. I wanna pray with you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want each and every one of these special people watching to know that you are speaking to them today, that they're not broken. No, they've not been defined by their past. They've been prepared by their past for the future and for the greatness that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.